Hello everyone. How are you all? We were uh, we are just tangled around the concepts of balanced and unbalanced forces. And here we are. We are going to find a different different concepts which by which we are going to resolve the problems of balanced and unbalanced forces. And we will going to differentiate between them also. Up till now, we have covered up what is a force, what are the types of force, like contact force and non-contact force. And after that, we have been proceed towards uh, balanced force and Newton's first law of motion. What a Newton's first law of motion says that, it says it, uh, the statement of Newton's first law states that if a body is at rest, it will continue to in, be in the state of rest. If a body is in motion, it will continue to be in the state of motion. All right, and after that, we have proceeded towards a balanced force in which we came to know that a balanced force is a force in which the force acting on the object is, is equal. Suppose there is one force and there is another force and the resultant of both the forces will be zero. That means whatever force is coming up from this direction, the equivalent force is coming up in this direction that will going to be cancelled out. So, in this particular scenario, we have gone through a number of things and here we are to proceed with it. Please give me a moment so that I can just wash out all these texts I have written. Uh, yes, there we go. Up till now, we have learned about how a balanced force work and how an unbalanced force work. If on this box, what is a balanced force is that if there is a total force applied in this particular direction, so there are three forces, that is 10 Newton, 20 Newton and 30 Newton. Okay, and the force in this direction are 20 Newton, 10 Newton and 10 Newton. So what will be the resultant force? This is force F1 in this direction and this is force F2 in this direction. F1 is the resultant force of all the three of them and F2 is the resultant force of all three of them. So now we will going to proceed in this as, let me change the color first. So here we go and we came to know that the resultant force with us will be F1 which is equivalent to 10 plus 20 plus 30 and it will be around 60 Newton. After that, there will be another force, F2, which is equivalent to 20 plus 10 plus 10 Newton. Okay. So, in this particular world of balanced and unbalanced force, we will going to understand how we are going to proceed on it. There is a resultant force that is F2 forces 40 Newton. So, if I need to find the equivalent force, what will be the higher force? The higher force is obviously F1. F1 is higher than F2. F1 is greater than F2. So, the resultant force which will going to be applied across all these objects, that will be equivalent to, which one will going to dominate? Dominating force is F1. As F1 force is 60 Newton and F2 force is 40 Newton. And what will be the domination? That is the resultant force. Resultant force will be equivalent to 40 minus 60. That will be equivalent to 20 Newton. I think I should write it in a better way. So, here we go guys. We got the resultant force as 60 minus 40. And that will be equivalent to 20 Newton. And there we go. This is the concept. How we are going to proceed on the finding out the resultant force. Now, my question is suppose. This force has been reduced 10. Okay. Suppose this force is 10 and this force is 20 now. So, if this F1 force, which was 60 earlier, has become 40 now, 10 plus 10 plus 20. So, the resultant force over here is 40 Newton. So, what will be the result now? The result will be F1 will be equals to F2 and that will be equals to 40 Newton. So, if I need to do F1 minus F2, that will be 40 minus 40, that is equals to 0 Newton. So, guys, we know that there is no resultant force. 
the resultant force across this position is zero. That means the object will be continued. Object will be continued to be in the state of rest or if it was earlier in motion, it will continue to be in the state of motion if there is no any other force is applied on it. Not even the gravitation force. Not the frictional force. Okay, so we will going to understand the different aspects of balanced and unbalanced force. So here we go. In the concept of balanced and unbalanced force, we will going to understand this thing as number one. In case of balanced force, initially I am going to write it here. There will be a concept of balanced and there will be a concept of unbalanced force. So there will be a balanced and unbalanced force. And in this, we will going to study as number one. In this, in a case of balanced force, all the forces, the resultant of all the forces is zero. That means whatever force is coming up here and whatever force is coming up there, the resultant of them will be zero. Or I can say F1 is equals to F2. That means force coming up from this direction, force coming up in this direction will be same. Force coming up in this direction, force coming up in this direction will be same. Force coming up in this direction, force coming in the opposite direction will be same. Okay. So, forces should be equal and opposite. This is the prime and second condition. Forces should be equal and opposite to each other. Okay. If they would be in same direction, what will be the result? If I say this is a box and there is a force of 10 Newton and there is another force of 10 Newton or I can say there is a force of 10 Newton and there is another force which is of 10 Newton only but it is at the other end. So what will be the resultant force? Then in this case resultant force both the forces are in same direction they will going to be add up F1 plus F2 that will be equal to 20 Newton. So that won't be called as balanced force. Balanced force is one where inward force is always equivalent to outward force. Okay, that means resultant force at a particular point is zero. Then only we can say that there is a balanced force. Okay, then when we talk about an unbalanced force, we can say that when the resultant force on an object is not zero. That means when the resultant force is non-zero, the magnitude of resultant force is non-zero, then we can say that Forces acting on the objects are not balanced. Second thing, movement of the object depends on the size and direction of the resultant force. I'll tell you this thing also, how we meant about it. Okay. So, third thing, the example that if, we act, if an object is acted by two unequal forces that are acting opposite direction, the resultant force is equal to the difference between the two forces. Resultant will be equal to the difference between both the other forces whatever it is so let's check it out okay so in this we will going to study as first thing the resultant of all the forces should be a non-zero value non-zero value magnitude of them should be non-zero you can say okay second thing f1 should not be equal to f2 that means, uh, that really doesn't mean that they are, they should not be equal and opposite. Maybe I can say, force should be, forces are not supposed to be equal and opposite, equal and opposite. There we go. Okay, guys. So, in this case of resultant uh, zero, that is balanced force, object is supposed to be at rest. In this object is supposed to be at rest or in constant motion or an constant doing constant motion and in this object should be in motion or I can say if it was in motion it can stop doing that motion whatever state it is the state will going to be changed. That means the movement of the object depends upon the size and the direction of the resultant force. This is also important. Suppose uh, there is a car. Okay. And on this car, suppose there is a car. And in this car, there is a force of, I should say, 300 Newton. 
okay and there is a force of and there is another force of 280 newton so what will be the resultant force there will be a resultant force is 20 newton so will that force is more than enough to push a we push a car to pull a car so according to me the car should move in this direction according to me the resultant force should be in this direction but it is of 20 newton only so for this 20 newton of force what will be the state further state there won't be any kind of change in motion in the car the car cannot move what's the reason because the resultant force does not have this much of magnitude so that it can displace the car car is also having a, its own force car is also is having a gravitational force it's on mass so definitely there would be some kind of force that will be f equals to mg so one force will be this, this direction also so no 20 newton force is not equal and opposite and obviously the direction will also vary and uh, uh, things will going to vary according to them so now we are going to discuss few more cases which are very important for us to understand and my question is how a jet plane take off if in your examination the question has been came up how a jet plane take off see a jet plane is just challenging the acceleration due to gravity you can say a gravitational force if the jet is possessing a high mass if i can say yes so over here if i say jet mass is too high in tons okay suppose 100 tons thousand tons okay so this much of heavy mass will going to possess a a weight a force downward force so how much will be that downward force that downward force must be around 1000 into 9.8 and what will be the result of it that will be 9800, 9800 Newton. So, such a high force is applied on this air jet plane. So, how can we just imagine that this force will going to work? How will such kind of huge force will going to work on it? It's a difficult job to work upon it. So, what will be the next step in it? How this particular jet will going to take off? See guys. There are two things. First thing, there is an engine which is applying a force on it. Okay. There are two types of force which are going to oppose a air jet to move. Okay. What are the two forces? First is air resistant. Okay. It's a huge mass. And when it try to cut the air, there will be an air resistance or drag you can say. And second thing, there is a acceleration due to gravity. But that acceleration due to gravity can be uh, covered up with the help of a heavy motion. Okay, that can be covered up a bit with the help of a uh, high velocity of that particular air jet without uh, before taking a flight. Okay, without just taking off. Uh, before just taking off. Okay, so before the takeoff, the uh, air jet plane is always having a high velocity to overcome the effect of acceleration due to gravity also the effect of a thrust of uh, you can say air resistance okay so to cover up that air resistance the force of air resistance which is coming up for the flight there is a thrust force which has been created with the help of engine if you notice whenever a plane take off there is a huge amount of fuel that will going to come out of it there is a best example of it just checking out the launching of satellite in launching of satellite what is going on there is a fuel and that heavy fuel will going to do what that heavy fuel will going to push it will going to provide it a push a thrust force which will going to oppose that air resistance so what will be my next step if i need to oppose that air resistance I need to do some kind of extra thrust force. So, if this is my jet, if this is my jet, there are number of forces which I have been, which are supposed to be applied in it. First is air resistant. It needs to cut the air. If you have ever experienced, if there would be a, a heavy storm, 
or thunderstorm you can say which is a very strong one which is having an effect then in that such cases you will notice that uh, you will experience a push a kind of a position by the air while uh, driving against the flow of wind okay and for the uh, best example of it is like you are just sailing a ship or you are just in a ship you will try to find the direction of wind which is coming up because it, the waves of water will be dependent on such kind of winds and thunderstorms and waves okay so the waves direction in which the wave is uh, moving on it will going to reduce our usage of engine and its oil and fuel so engine won't have won't need to have a heavy load so we can say that this air resistant is very effective and also obviously there is a force that is going to be mg we are not considering it right now because uh, but still we will going to work upon it later on so this flight need to overcome two types of forces that is first is air resistant and small effect of mg also so for that it is going to attain some kind of heavy velocity and the most important thing which is going to possess by it is in this engine portion it will going to give it a heavy push a thrust a strong force which will going to cut this air resistant okay so that thrust force if f thrust so in this if my f thrust f thrust is higher than air resistance f air force applied by air that means resistance offered by the air then only a jet only in this condition the jet will going to take off is that clear i hope everybody of you do understand what has been happening in this particular jet plane so we can say that when a jet plane is taking off the thrust force of its engine is greater than the force of air resistance or you can call it drag on it and the resultant force on the plane is the difference between the thrust force and the force of air so uh, air resistance acting on it so we can say that if and only if the thrust applied by the engine is greater than the air resistant or drag then only my flight will going to take off and one more thing i hope you all must have understood why do we have a streamlined structure of a jet plane either you take uh, either you talk about uh, any kind of aquatic animal please try to notice every aquatic animal will have a structure something like this if you notice every structure if we are talking about a fish it will also have this type of structure okay and this structure is something like this pointed from the front and then it has been attain a mass okay so uh, that will be like a fish something like this there are its fins okay so yes it is always having a streamline structure we always call it a streamline this is called as streamline structure so anything which is just moving across a uh, moving uh, moving against the effect of flu they always possess a streamline structure uh, for them either that's a fish either that's a ship if you notice what is the front structure of a sh ship have you ever noticed what is the front structure of a ship how a front structure of ship has been made it has been made something like this it will be a pointed one if you notice ever noticed it will be something like this and be like this and later on if you just have a look of a ship from the upside it will be something like this okay or i should make it in a better way i'll do this like this so yes and this so this will be something like this and this is how a bo boat has been designed so you notice the boat uh, structure is streamlined it is just pointed at the front what's the reason it needs to cut the air it needs to cut the flow of water that's why we always use such type of fin or i can say a uh, pointed structure or we just call it a streamlined structure what do we call it a streamlined structure so why do we have a streamline structure so that it can cut the air and it can reduce the effect of air resistance to jet planes it is very much uh, 
important for you all to understand all these things streamline structure either you are going through an uh, water or you can say aquatic or you can say fluid flow and either you need to cross a kind of you can say uh, air kind of air or resistance then in the both the cases you always need a pointed structure from the end front end so that it can cut the fluid it can cut the pressure which is coming up on uh, from the front and it will be easy for us to penetrate its best example is how we do possess a knife and it is having a very sharp edge reason what is that uh, the uh, minimum will be the area pressure will be maximum and pressure will going to help us in penetrate okay we just cross cross through it with providing minimum resistance so guys this is all about uh, how a balanced force and unbalanced force work and how a jet jet plane take off so we sorted out one question of ours there are few more examples and another concepts which are very much important for you for understanding the concepts of forces like a resultant what is a resultant force and we'll going to sort some numericals on it also okay and some more examples let's do that okay so thank you guys see you in my next lecture